10 points to anyone who can name the space between the theater seats and the cinema screen. Hmm? Anyone? Here, let me show you. It's called a film director. A film director by the name of Orson Welles was born in 1915 and passed away in 1985. At one point during his lifetime, he said, The enemy of art is the absence of limitations. In the world of filmmaking, this statement might be more relevant now than it ever was. Every filmmaker wishes to boldly go where no other filmmaker has gone before. But before they reach the final frontier, they should probably have a good look around first. In 2006, Professor Peter Summerlin, who was an architect, conducted a study involving children in playgrounds, the main focus being the design of supportive environments for normal childhood development. The children, supervised by a teacher and with the consent of their parents, were taken on a small field trip to a nearby playground that had no fence around it, no boundaries whatsoever. They were allowed to play anywhere, to explore, to have fun. They didn't. They kept huddling around their teacher, fearful of leaving out of her sight. On their second field trip, the kids were taken to a similar playground. Same size, same environment, with one exception. It had a fence, a visible limitation. The children felt at ease to explore the space. They were able to separate from the caregiver and continued to develop in their sense of self while still recognizing that they were in a safe environment within the limits of the fence. Boundaries are vital for a healthy, balanced development and especially for creativity. Let's play. Let's imagine that the playground is a story, a movie script, where the swings and slides are characters and plot points, twists and surprises, good humor and empathy. And there is no fence, no limitations on the budget, on the equipment, on the special effects. What do you think happens to the writers that want to play within the story, to the directors that need to imagine the visual representation? What do you think happens to the film? 2001, Whitehead and Plummert from the Department of Psychology of the University of Iowa published a paper in the Journal of Cognition and Development. The experiment was simple. Grab a dollhouse, hide tiny plastic carrots within the dollhouse, and ask the children to find the carrots. Fun for hours. You might have already guessed, the control group had no boundaries between the rooms, no walls in the dollhouse. As such, they had more trouble searching and organizing their search. 1973, E.W. Menzel, Department of Psychology, performed a study, Chimpanzee Spatial Memory Organization. I trust you can see where we're going with this. We have the information, we're aware of various different functional successful creative processes, and yet here we are, on the edge of losing our trust in new films, new minds, new stories. Why? You can see how there is a strong connection between making a good movie and having healthy boundaries within the creative process. Keeping that in mind, let's have a look at our modern audience. A new Indiana Jones film was announced, and while scrolling through social media, I saw comments from people that just read, I hope it doesn't suck. At this moment in time, we know nothing about the film, about the plot, about the cast. They do not trust the filmmakers. This isn't your average negative view. It goes deeper than that. These are the emotional reactions of cinephiles who are promised good stories over and over again, only to be disappointed, either due to a poor story or conflicts between directors and studios, or having an agenda that becomes more important than the film itself. The cinema experience often leaves a bad taste after the credits rolled. William Shakespeare, one of the most parodied authors in the world, said, Expectation is the root of all heartache. An article on exploring your mind explains how neuroscientists discovered that a jolt takes place in our brain before we experience disappointment. There's a sudden decrease in dopamine, endorphins, and serotonin. So all those elements responsible for your well-being momentarily leave your brain. On a less scientific plane, there's a general impression that being upset over a film is childish and immature. While there are undoubtedly examples of immaturity here and there, the global response has nothing to do with it. Most mature people react on an emotional level 
because there is a connection there that is very personal to them and they are hoping to resonate empathically with the director's and scriptwriter's creative choices. Often these people, these moviegoers, end up disappointed. They subconsciously start associating new film announcements with a loss in dopamine, endorphins and serotonin. The comment, I hope it doesn't suck, is a direct response to that loss. So what should we do? Should we lower our expectations regarding professional filmmakers? Should the filmmakers cultivate and grow their creativity by introducing artificial boundaries? Should they make films that cater to everyone's wishes, thus ending up with a film for everyone, thus ending up with a film that nobody likes? Should we see this from a different angle? A lack of healthy boundaries can lead to a dynamic regression, thus the filmmaker ends up relying on very old, comfortable and overused tropes, or on various wild ideas that have little to do with telling a proper story. If you consider the added weight of the studio that forces the filmmaker to use character typologies meant to appeal to the masses, we end up with a superficial and disappointing experience. According to Psychology Today, studies show that many of us fear disappointment, so much so that we actually change our behavior just so we won't have to feel disappointed again. Have you noticed the increase of movie critics on YouTube, at least in the last few years? Did they seem bitter to you, angry, sarcastic, tired? Do you think these emotions could be coming from a general feeling of disappointment? Do you think there might be a connection between the boundaries we talked about and the emotional investment some people might have for certain pre-established characters? A story element or a visual element can have a high emotional significance for the audience and that is something to be respected and built upon. This is a natural boundary that is sacred, especially if the story has been written by someone else before in the form of a comic or a book. Another natural boundary is represented by the guidelines of storytelling. If a filmmaker remains huddled around the teacher, so to speak, they can't see the bigger picture, the story arcs, the plot holes, the hundreds of interconnections within a good movie script. January 2020, a study conducted by researchers from University College London's Department of Experimental Psychology and View Entertainment found a direct link between watching a film and the impact it has on our brain functions, on our social connections, on our productivity and creativity. The science experiment used a combination of biometric devices similar to a Fitbit or an Apple Watch and questionnaires to investigate what happens to our bodies and minds during a two-hour film. I'm quoting directly from the article they wrote. Links to all the studies can be found in the description. Research suggests that two unique elements of the cinema experience drove the findings, the focus activity and the shared social focus. These elements have proven long-term benefits on our overall brain function. Professor Devlin, who was part of the crew that conducted the experiment, said that despite the fact that these people are all strangers to one another, their hearts begin to beat in synchrony while watching the film together. What we know from previous work is that when people demonstrate synchronized physiological responses like this, they also show stronger social and emotional bonds. This type of reaction also occurs and has been recorded when people hug their life partner. It is a reaction based on love and trust. The moviegoers reported feeling closer to their fellow audience members afterwards simply by watching the film together, just like you are all watching this clip right now. So the real question is, should filmmakers think a little bit more about what they're putting out there? Being a filmmaker is not just a hobby. It's not just a career. It's a responsibility. You are responsible for what you are placing into people's minds, into people's hearts, and into people's souls. 
Storytellers come from the prehistoric times, when Neanderthals painted on the walls of their caves. It was their belief that the images they depicted would influence next day's hunt. The emotional implications and behavioral influences are deeply rooted within our history and our subconscious. The story of a film should be dedicated to bringing people together, healing wounds, touching hearts. The characters need to grow and be examples, both negative and positive, that help us grow as well. The moment you make a film with an enormous budget, with all the shiny special effects, with everyone fighting over who gets to make the script the way they like it, without a second thought in regards to the message of the film or the way the characters and story should convey that message, you lose all boundaries. And when you lose all boundaries, you cannot take us with you because we do not feel safe here. A film director by the name of John Huston said, I don't try to guess what a million people will like. It's hard enough to know what I like. Perhaps that's where we need to begin. It's not about giving people what they like. It's about giving people what they need. Being a filmmaker is akin to weaving baskets. You can enjoy it, choose the colors and the shape, but the basket is not for you, it's for your audience to carry their hopes and soul medicine in it. A film should be there to make them laugh when they're sad, to heal when they're wounded, to give hope and stability when they have lost themselves and need a reminder that things can be all right again. Make it last a lifetime of use. Make it trustworthy. Thank you for watching. Uh, subscribe and like uh, if you want to see more. I'll see you guys in the next scene.